Okay, so we're going to do lab 5.6.9, where we create VLANs in a GUI. So, first thing we're going to do is get logged into the GUI interface for our Cisco switch. Looks like it already has it pulled up. I'm going to copy the username and paste that in. Oh. This stupid thing doesn't copy and paste very well. Okay, IT, switch, admin, password is admin only, okay. All right, so I'm logged in. <clears throat> what it wants us to do first thing we need to create and configure a vlan so on the left hand side see all of our different choices and there is a section called vlan management first thing i'll, I'll spend just a little bit of time helping you navigate through here this first tab is where you can change the default vlan of the switch by default at the beginning everything is using default vlan one you want to eventually change that, but you can't change that until you actually create some additional VLANs. So we're gonna go to VLAN settings. And in there, you can see we have our default VLAN that's built. We're gonna click the add button to add a new VLAN. This new VLAN, it wants us to create VLAN two. And the name is IP cameras. This is a real world thing. You would totally put your IP cameras in its own VLAN. You would not want that to be sharing with other stuff. All right. Yeah, yeah, some places have that open up through their, their firewall and you can check it out. So. Okay, so hit apply and we got a success, click close. One thing to notice with Cisco gear and a lot of switch gear, in the CLI, you once you make a change like that, you have to do a copy run save to copy it from your running config into your save config. On the GUI interface, this little save thing starts flashing and is super annoying, which I guess is a good thing so you don't forget to save it. So I'm gonna hit save just because it's super annoying. but. So we're copying from the running config to the startup config, hit apply. You can disable the icon blinking, but it is kind of nice to have that. It's, it's super easy to forget to save it, especially in the GUI interface. Okay, so VLAN settings. Now we have our VLAN two. Next, we want to configure ports GE, so gig ethernet 18, through 21 as untagged in that VLAN. So we're gonna go to port VLAN membership and choose GE18 and we're gonna join VLAN. So I went too fast there. In the VLAN section on the left-hand side, I don't know why mine won't scroll now. Oh, there we go. There's port VLAN membership. So we're gonna, we need to assign our ports to the VLAN. So GE18, join VLAN. And what you're gonna see in here is <clears throat> the left-hand side are the available VLANs that it's not a part of. The right-hand side are the VLANs that it is a part of. So right now it's part of one. We were gonna click on one and then click the less than symbol, the little arrow to move that over to VLAN, to the select VLAN, and then we're gonna take two and move that over there. And the U means untagged. And you can see, you can change the tagging down below. You can tag it or untag it. If you remember tagged VLAN, you're gonna tag it. If you have multiple VLANs, you wanna tag it. That means you're doing a trunk connection. So untag, okay, we can hit apply. And now we can either go back to the previous screen or you can hit the little pull down at the top next to port and just change it to GE19. 
and we're going to do the same thing. There is also a way if you were doing this for multiple ports, you could just copy it. But since we're here, it's easy and it's just four ports. So I'm just going to hit apply. So we're going to do that for all four of those. Go to GE20, get rid of VLAN 1, add VLAN 2. Oh, no, not 24. We want 21. Hit apply. Okay, then don't forget, hit the save, the flashing save up top. And we're saving it from the running config is the source to the destination. And this is why it can be really easy. When we made that change, it put it in the running config. So those ports are immediately moved over into the VLAN. If you don't save it into the startup config, as soon as this switch reboots, those changes are gone. Which sometimes is a good thing. Sometimes it's good to just have it in the running config, test it, make sure everything's working the way it should, and then save it to the, then copy it. Because sometimes you can mess stuff up and you're like, ooh, man, I don't even know how to get back to where I was. You can just reboot the switch. That'll get you back. Okay. So that is that part. Now is where we need to actually do the cabling piece. So we need to go to the lobby, floor one lobby, and go to the hardware to get us into that the closet to actually get things plugged in.